Many species can fly, but not in the same way. Did they all come from the same place? The short answer is no. We will explore the long answer in this short video. Imagine you are driving down a highway. The road you are on merges with another one. The cars from both highways are now all on the same road, but they came from different places. This is similar to convergent evolution. Convergent evolution is when two different species evolve the same trait independently. The trait did not arise because of a common ancestor. All of the species here have wings, but this is a result of homoplasy. These analogous structures evolved separately in each lineage, rather than all coming from a common ancestor. The theory of convergent evolution is supported by the idea of Occam's razor, which states that the simplest hypothesis is probably the best. In other words, the most parsimonious phylogeny is probably the most correct. Examine this phylogeny above. What color was the ancestor at the root of the tree? It seems unlikely that it would be any color other than red or blue, otherwise there would have to be many changes. In this tree, the red trait is homologous. In this tree, the red trait is homoplastic. This is the most parsimonious tree, so we assume it is the correct one. This is why we believe that gliding evolved separately in sugar gliders and flying squirrels. If this was a homologous trait, all other marsupials and all other placentals that currently exist would have had to lose this trait. That would be a lot of evolution. Let's take a closer look at the sugar glider. Sugar gliders are marsupial mammals. This means that the mammals were developed and carried in a pouch of their mother's belly. This is very common to species in the homeland of the sugar glider, Australia. They have a more specific diet which consists mainly of fruit and some vegetables. Sugar gliders also require a more heated environment which correlates to how they are native to places like Australia and Indonesia. Now let's look at the flying squirrel. Flying squirrels are placental mammals. This differs from the sugar glider in the sense that these mammals are developed in a placenta, where the mother and fetus exchange nutrients, just like humans. These mammals are slightly bigger than sugar gliders and are native to North America, more specifically the southern United States. The diet of flying squirrels is more diverse than that of a sugar glider, consisting of nuts, fruits, and seeds. As you can see, there are more commonalities in these two species than just flight, but the differences are overwhelming. The common ancestor between these two species is one of the oldest known species of mammals, and resembled what we now know as the rat. This ancestor comes from a long lineage and is not responsible for most common traits in these two mammals, such as their gliding ability. Rather, the trait is analogous. Some of their other similarities include their white bellies and nocturnality. So why would two species with no common ancestor form the same adaptation? There isn't an easy answer. But we can see how the benefits of adapting the same ability to glide are similar for both species, as well as other mammals that can glide. The ability to glide has many benefits, such as less energy is expended gliding than by traveling on all fours, the ability to swiftly escape predators while in treetops, the ability to seek out potential food sources and glide towards them instead of scavenging on the ground, saving the mammal time and energy, extra protection from possible extremities and warmth during colder seasons. The gliding locomotion and high sensitivity to climate changes will make sugar gliders and flying squirrels ideal study objects for studying global environmental change. Here are some hypotheses observed in the literature about these gliding mammals. How do you think these unique mammals will evolve? <laughs>